Hello everyone, the Flying Scotsman here. Welcome to part two of the Compact Armada 7770 DMT restoration. In the last video, we actually replaced the hard disk drive and we installed the diagnostic partition from Compaq. So, what about this machine then? What about the Windows side of things? Well, I do plan to install it, but how would I go about installing Windows if I don't have a floppy disk drive? Well, on Windows 98, that would be simple. Just put the CD in and boot from it. And then, you know, kind of follow the instructions from there to get a fully working Windows 98 install. Very nice, very nice. You can do that, absolutely fine. No bother, but wait a minute. It's Windows 95 I'm wanting to install on here. How would I go about that? And um, another question one might ask is, Jay, did you not do a video a bit, um, that was very similar to this four to five years ago? And the answer is, yes, I did. But I'm wanting to take another crack at it. <clears throat> anyway, the answer to the question is, well, we know that the Windows 98 CD actually is bootable. We know that um, if you have an original Windows 95 CD um, that you did not procure from uh, WinWorld PC, it is not bootable. So, the solution is actually really quite simple. If you have a Windows 98 CD, what we're going to do is we're going to boot from it to format and partition the hard disk and to copy the Windows 95 files over because I like to copy those files across and it, you know and just kind of have them living on the hard disk anyway and this is a 6 gig hard disk so there's enough room for those files so let's see about powering up and while we do that we'll quickly Stuff the Windows 98 CD into the drive. There we go. So now we're in the Windows 98 CD ROM startup menu. So what, what we want to do is boot from the CD ROM. Now it might be a wee bit alien as to why there would be a boot with or without CD ROM support option. Well Okay, this is a bit complicated, but um, a common way of making a CD bootable is to have it emulate a floppy disk, so to speak. So, as far as the computer knows, even though it, even though it's booted from a CD, as far as um, anything is concerned now, we're just kind of pretending we're booting from a Windows 98 floppy disk. So... The emulated floppy disk has a few files on it, but not all of them. So if I were to start with CD-ROM support, it would load up the CD-ROM driver, and then it would be able to read the rest of the CD. If, however, I choose not to install uh, load CD-ROM support, I will get access to the files that are on the virtual floppy disk. So that is what I'm going to do now, because... It'll be slightly quicker, and to be honest, I don't really need CD-ROM support at this moment in time. All I need is the FDisk command, which is here. So, it's saying, uh, essentially this is saying, do I want to enable large hard disk support? Um, and I'm going to click yes. So now, because there's already a partition on here, we can tap for and go into the display partition information. It's a non-DOS partition of 15 megabytes. It is saying, warning, no partition is set active. Disk 1 is not startable unless a partition is set active. Well, no one, we're not wanting to set that partition active, otherwise the computer would perpetually boot into the diagnostics partition. That could be annoying. What we actually want to do is create a, a primary partition, and we can do that. And we don't even have to worry about the diagnostics partition, because it's there, it's set up, it, it won't be touched. 
So basically what we can do is just set up a partition as you would with any hard disk. Now this obviously is um, something uh, unique to uh, compact um, armadas from the mid 90s. This is not something you need to worry about in general. So what we're going to do, create a DOS partition or a logical DOS drive. We want to create a primary partition, so again, option one will do. And then we're going to verify the drive integrator. Perfect time for a hyper tea. So now it's going to ask the question, do you wish to use the maximum available size for a primary DOS partition and make the partition active? Actually, yes we do. So just make sure Y is the option that's in there and away it goes. And it's now creating a partition and once again, for whatever reason, verifying the drive integrator. Again, time for a hyper tea. See how this is working? <laughs> okay, so now it's done. It's saying you must restart your system for your changes to take effect. Any drives you have created are changed, changed must be formatted after you restart. Shut down Windows before restarting. So you can tell this is a later version of F-Disk because, you know, there is that there. Shut down Windows before restarting. Anyway, what we're going to do, press Escape to exit F-Disk. So what we're doing here now is we're going to, once again, boot from the CD-ROM. Now, unlike last time, we will want to boot with CD-ROM support because we're wanting to access the D drive. So this time we're going to start computer with CD-ROM support. Now if I was to start Windows 98 setup from the CD-ROM, that actually is quite an elegant solution because what it does is it automatically partitions and formats your hard disk and installs Windows 98 if that's what I wanted to do. The only problem is I like to install it from the hard disk. So even if I was installing Windows 98 I would still do things this way. So I'm just going to boot with CD-ROM support now for some reason the format command is not on the virtual floppy disk so I need to actually browse to the Win98 directory what I want to do is format C colon slash S all right, so the hard disk has been formatted. It actually uh, managed to do so quite quickly, actually. Um, I know with the other hard disk, it did take a while to format because it had to reallocate a bunch of sectors. Uh, I didn't, you know, I really don't know if any um, sectors had to be reallocated this time around because quite frankly, I didn't really look. But uh, hey-ho, anyway, let's uh, name this uh, hard disk. So now we want to navigate out of the Windows 98 directory because we're actually going to be changing over to the Windows 95 OSR 2.5 disk. Now the reason I've chosen to run Windows 95 OS R2 on this machine is because this is quite a late machine for Windows 95, um, at, at least in terms of laptops. I mean, I know the Pentium MMX233 was out, um, you know, a wee bit before 95, um, well, a wee bit before 98, but I certainly think that um, <clears throat> on newer machines, um, 
95 OSR 2.5C, the drivers have been updated somewhat and actually can make machines like this easier to set up. The same thing with, um, I've found the same thing with the Armada 1592DT, which um, is also a um, Pentium MMX 233 and it has a USB port on it. I can't remember if this one does or does not have a USB port. I think it does, but um, yeah. Anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to CD, well first of all, hard disks formatted, so what I'm going to do is make a Windows directory, make an options directory, make a cabs directory, and then copy D195 so it's going to copy all the Windows 95 installer files to the hard disk so now we're going to boot from the machine's hard drive welcome to Win uh, Windows 95 setup wizard so from here on in this is just the regular 95 install no, we don't want to install to Windows.000. Please do not even think about doing that. Mm. So now we want a custom setup. Okay, so now we're going to allow it to detect hardware. Um, I guess we'll let it detect the CD-ROM drive. I mean, after all, it is here. Notice anything slightly different? Well, you should, because the Microsoft network is missing from here. But for now, we can just go ahead and install everything else. There we go. So, I don't want the client for Navel network networks. I will take some file and printer sharing though. Don't know why, but yeah. I will also take some TCP IP. Excellent. So again I'm gonna click next. I'm going to name the machine. So now we're just going to set up everything else. Now this machine does have an American keyboard layout, believe it or not. Just like my 7800 does. So we're going to leave that alone now. Uh, what I will do though is I will set the uh, system locale to British. Unfortunately, when Scotland goes independent, I don't believe there will be a Windows 95 um, update that will acknowledge either Scotland or Catalonia as their own countries and give them their own locales. Anyway. No, I don't want to create a boot disk. <coughs> so there we are. It's going to go ahead now and start copying files, I guess. So I'm just going to let it do that. So Windows 95 setup is nearing completion. Right, okay. Um, the setup wizard is ready to start Windows 95 and begin the last part of setup. So here, according to the book titled Windows 95 for busy people I don't know the ISBN so uh, yeah um, <clears throat> if I click finish the text will change from English to finish now I'm getting on and so is a book actually okay so now we're ready
so Windows 95 is now setting up the hardware. And I don't know why, but on this computer, it can sometimes act a bit odd with the programs on the start menu bit. But um, I've just seen the floppy drive access light light up. Um, so I think that's why it's stuck now. I mean, obviously, it will stop trying to read from the floppy disk drive, which isn't there. <laughs> and it will continue. There we go. So now, Greenwich Mean Time. And I don't know why I'm going to do this, but I will set the time. So, um, today is November the 9th, 2017. There we go, and the time is 20, I want to say 22, wait a minute, there we go, so now it's going to ask me if I want to set up Windows messaging formerly Microsoft Exchange and a printer. I don't need to set up either of those. So now we're just going to go into Windows 95 itself. Luckily, <coughs> I was able to procure a um, drivers and applications installation disk actually for this computer. So, we can install the drivers. In fact, that's what we're going to be doing. We will be installing the drivers from this. But first, let's see if uh, Internet Explorer 4 setup is going to start. Because if it is, then um, I have another plan. That um, It might seem a bit odd, but um, I will explain it. Okay, so now we're on to the Windows desktop, and as you can see, we have the new MSN icon. So, now, it's time to install some drivers. First of all, though, I think I want to enable the PC card slots. Windows 95, annoyingly, it shuts itself down. It's like, what have you done that for? Am, am I going to take the machine apart now and install the PC card slots? Is, is that what I'm supposed to do? Install the PC card slots? Or maybe the USB, do I plug them in? Or parallel port PC MCIe card slots? Can't imagine that would go down very well. In fact, I'm pretty sure it wouldn't. So, I've got a couple of versions of Windows 95 OSR 2.5. One that will install Internet Explorer 5 on... Uh, Internet Explorer 4 when Windows starts up and one that won't. Um, and it seems a bit odd. I know Windows 95 OSR 2.1 does not install Internet Explorer 4, but... If I go looking in the installation directory, options, cabs, there's the installer for IE4. And it's not because I've copied the files over to the hard disk, because it usually, you know, it, it usually compensates for that as well. But um, that's, that is a bit odd, that... Um, this version doesn't actually install IE4. 
uh, right after it's installed Windows 95. Anyway, actually not a bad thing. Um, because I often like to install Microsoft Plus for Windows 95. You know, you get the desktop themes, you get a couple of uh, Wii goodies like that, pinball, that sort of thing. <clears throat> it also brings with it its own set of 256 colour icons. I mean, mostly I probably won't be using them, but for whatever reason I decided I did want to enable high colour icons. The icon set that comes with Microsoft Plus, well, it's fucking horrible. Internet Explorer 4, on the other hand, updates the icon set, the standard Windows icon set, to that one of Windows 98, which looks a lot better. So, with that in mind, it is... I do prefer to install Plus before installing Internet Explorer 4, because if I install Plus after IE4, it will bring with it its really quite disgusting icons. Uh, some people might prefer them. I know it's a matter of opinion, but I mean, I, I don't like them. Um, anyway. But that's just my way of doing things. I know it's odd and what have you, but yeah. Okay, so this CD, basically what it does is it has drivers on for uh, various things. All I need to do is go and select them. So that's exactly what I'm doing now. So what you do is you select the driver and then copy it to the hard disk. Um, so that's exactly what I'm going to do. Just kind of copy these drivers over to the hard Just let the uh, setup program extract them to the hard disk. Floppy disk enhancement, that is actually quite important. Um, I think a few of these, though, you are better just letting it write floppy disks and you can do that actually it has an option 1.44 meg diskette so you can actually make installation diskettes which is kind of nice So, what I will do is I will go and extract these drivers, and then we'll start installing them. So I've extracted all the uh, drivers now, but to be able to access them, what I need to do is I need to go down to Options. Um, why don't I just browse all by one window, that'd be better. Um, and then show all files. There we go. <coughs> so, now we have a tilde compact directory. So I can go ahead and start installing drivers. Now, some of these drivers you do have to install manually. For example, the display driver. Um, I am going to have to right click on the desktop. Go to settings. Um, There we go. And then change the adapter driver. Again, this is something, you know, it's, it's uh, attempting to access a floppy drive in game, which isn't there. Yeah. So. Next thing I do then is I navigate to the compact directory and then go down to uh, video, s 3 and there we go, s 3 Inc. whatever that is. And then 
I'll just set it to 800 by 600 16 bit color and show the settings icons on the taskbar because why not? And I must say, I mean, this does seem to be running a hell of a lot smoother now than it did on uh, this drive, which I think is on its way out. <clears throat> and there you go. Now there are some programs also to install but there's no installers for them. So, um, well, let me show you a trick. You can either right click and select install, but if you want to uh, make sure it's going to install, you can go to uh, start settings control panel, add or remove programs, and then go to Windows setup and then click have disk again wait for about 12 months or so for uh, it to uh, try and figure out that there is no floppy disk in the drive thanks old Barbo go down to compact and then rail mode and then we've got rail mode.env so click OK OK again now we've got MS-DOS rail mode um, drivers and then that we have some options so we've got a mouse session and TIAC CDI MS-DOS rail mode so there you go basically just want to install everything there and then click install and there you go okay now there's one last thing I would like to install before actually um, before actually going off and installing the rest of uh, the drivers and what have you off camera and that is the floppy disk enhancement. As you can see, there is an option for a floppy drive A. And I don't know if you can or not, but um, it is there. So what we need to do is to have the machine only register a floppy drive's existence when there is actually one. So to do that, we need to install the plug and play floppy driver. So again, it's in the tilde compact. I extracted it there. Go to the floppy folder. Windows 95 update. This program adds Windows 95 PMP support for floppy drives. Do you wish to continue? Yes. Setup complete. Now the floppy drive is still there, but the icon is different. It now just has a removable storage icon at the moment. But if we shut down Windows 95, and we start it back up again, and then we go back into my computer, what we will find is the floppy drive is missing. So if we were to go and install the sound drivers, let's do that, may as well. Oh look, the um, compact modem's been installed. Wasn't that nice? Um, go to unknown device. Now, when I select um, search for hardware, yes, it will not freeze at the floppy drive for ages because it's not even, there's not even one there. So it's not going to try and address it. So I can just go ahead now and install the sound drivers.
So again, compact that thing. And what should start to happen now is, yeah, drivers should be installed. And same thing for the actual sound drive as well as the controller interface. And I got a wee pop from the speakers let, letting us know that the sound card is um, activated. So, there you have it. And now we have a uh, speaker icon on the taskbar as well. So what I'm going to do is install the rest of the drivers on my own and I'll come back when I'm ready to install some more stuff. So, now we are nearly done. I have a CD in the drive which has drivers for my PC card network adapter which I'm going to install now just by inserting it into the PCMCIA card slot. Next thing to do, install the hardware. And it's on this CD full of uh, stuff for, believe it or not, a Dell Latitude CPX. I want stuff from the Windows 95 disk. All in all, this machine has been running quite a bit smoother than it was with the older hard drive. I don't know if it's the new hard drive or the fact that I'm using Windows 95 OSR 2.5 or a combination of the two, but hey. I don't mind one way or the other. So anyway, what I should be able to do now is, yep, and indeed I can, I can log on to my network. So I can share stuff and so on. Share to be on drive M and then extra to be drive N. Now, I've been struggling with this tiny whitey mouse point for uh, long enough. So now it's time to change to something a wee bit more substantial. So there you have it, I guess. Um, something else I also want to do is... Um, Go to CPQ stuff, um, go to OEM logos, and then Windows 95 logo.sys, which is basically a copy of the Windows 95 boot screen with the uh, compact written on it. And I'll copy that, and then I will delete the pre existing logo.sys and rename this to logo.sys. Again, see how this works. Now, I think it's finally time we installed IE4. So, back to see Windows Options Cabs. Okay, now it's telling me that um, the installation of a previous program was never completed. We recommend restarting your computer before running i4 setup. Do you want to continue with setup? You know what? I will restart the machine.
That way you get to see the shiny new compact uh, branded <laughs> lock on screen. I would like to find a service manual so that I can figure out how to go about installing a replacement CMOS battery in this. And maybe a, a new screen cable because sometimes if you bend, sometimes, you know, if you move the screen, it can, the, the image can go all fuzzy. See, there we go. Nice compact logo there. Um... Really not got that much time left on this video, so uh, I thought I'd waste it logging in, as you do. Yep, yeah, I think it was rounding up the setup of the PC card. So, now we are ready to go ahead and install Internet Explorer 4.0. Big moment is this. Uh, whoopsie. Windows, Options, Cabs, A4 Setup. And I want a full install because I like all the toys. And yes, I want active desktop. And I'll take the United uh, Kingdom channels. Because IE channels are hope because Internet Explorer 4.0 channels themselves are hopelessly obsolete. Um, they're not going to make a set of channels for Scotland or Catalonia, I'm afraid. It's a bit of a shame. Or even. Kurdistan, who also declared independence. Congratulations there as well. Congratulations to all the um, small nations that are um, in the process of or have declared independence this year. It's um, essentially been quite uh, quite an exciting year and also very turbulent, actually. Of course there's going to be politics. It's Jay with a compact and a cup of tea. Um, but yeah, no, I... I I'm totally on side of Catalonia, just in case anyone was wondering. Um, you know, I know Spain actually... I know Spain said the Catalan referendum was illegal, but, um, you know, Spain didn't even want to put any legislation in that would make it legal. So, you know, what was Catalonia to do, really? And the way that the Spanish police acted, beating people up, brutalising people just for going and voting in an, an informal, well, a referendum, which, um, you know, people keep telling us, you know, or kept telling us in the case of the Scottish independence referendum, was not necessarily legally binding. I mean, you know, running the referendum, okay, was probably illegal. But voting in it, certainly, I don't think voting in it was. It was just, you know, even even if you wanted to go to vote no to uh, Catal Catalan independence. But now, you know, it's just... Spain has really come down hard and has imposed direct rule over Catalonia. Well, they think they have. I'd like to think that... Um, <laughs> I'd like to think that it's not actually a thing. Um, first of the uh, direct... Orders from Madrid has came through. Now, official documents are no longer to be in Catalan, rather Castilian. Um, really don't know about much about Mediterranean or uh, Mediterranean languages or what have you. But, um, yeah. Anyway, I will let this install. Okay, so now Internet Explorer 4 is installed. Setup was unable to close all programs automatically to continue setup, save any um, work and close all running programs, blah, blah, blah. I think this is one of those times where 
i.e. for setup, yep. It is closing all programs, optimizing your system for better performance. Sometimes it'll restart the computer, sometimes it won't. I think on this occasion it is probably going to. And in all honesty, it's probably for the best that it does. So when I go to log in, you get to hear that wonderful Brian Eno piece, and then Internet Explorer for setup. Windows is now setting up the following items. Internet Explorer, Internet Tools, Security, Desktop Settings. And it's actually going through those quite quickly. And now we will get to see our brand new shiny active desktop. Well, I will as soon as Windows gathers its thoughts and feelings together. Ah yes, personalised settings. <laughs> this box, this particular dialog box, sometimes still makes an appearance in Windows 10, if you've installed some kind of update. So there you go. Internet Explorer 4 with Active Desktop. Oh wow, look at that, the old BBC logo. <laughs> In i4.01 Service Pack 2, they actually did give you a newer BBC logo. Um, that was before they were completely corrupted. So there we have it, Internet Explorer 4 has now been installed, along with this super tall, super ugly mm. kind of start menu. Um, but uh, I think what I'm going to do next is install IE 5.5. As you can see, we have the IE 4, um, we have the Internet Explorer 4 um, style my computer windows and uh, windows explorer windows so next step now is to install is to install this bad boy now this does take me back a bit <laughs> takes me back to uh, 2000 um, when I would and and yes I did admit to doing this uh, actually to the headmaster because nerves got the better of me when he approached me the day that I did it uh, over something completely different <laughs> but um, I remember uh, back in the day when I used to surreptitiously try and install Internet Explorer 5.5 on machines that had IE3 on them because, well, it was the year 2000. And by that time, web pages were kind of throwing up error messages going, your browser's not supported because you're a bit, you're a bit of a special spable. So you've got the wrong browser. So you might want to update. And of course, at the time, you know, I wasn't 
I wasn't really too versed in the ways of uh, the Netscape Navigator or the Opera browser or anything like that. So, yeah, trying to download IE5 over uh, schools connection. I, I think it was. Uh, I think I managed to get away with it over a double period actually. And uh, what I did with the um, the update files that Windows Update used to it used to kind of put them all in a wee folder that you could access quite easily. And what I did with it is um, I put it into my wee workspace on uh, the server. So I was able to go and, you know, surreptitiously up upgrade other machines when nobody was looking. And yeah. <laughs> but no, that was, that was quite annoying that some machines had IE3 and you tried to access the internet and it... Half the websites wouldn't load and kept getting J script error popping up. I mean, what was all that about? J script error, J script error, J script error. Okay. Now to restart. And there we are. We're now on IE 5.5. Five. And the channel bars came up. Of course, you can close that if you want, but. Yeah, I'm just going to leave it there. So, start menu still looks a bit big, probably because it's got the log off option there, but it does look quite a bit better proportioned, I would say. And the My Computer window, again, things look better proportioned, whereas with IE4, You'd have uh, the buttons going off the end of the toolbar. Now, if there's not enough room to put them anywhere, you have a wee drop-down menu. So it's just kind of little things like that. I mean, it doesn't really matter too much, and a lot of people really wouldn't care. But, I don't know, for me, it just kind of finishes everything off really quite nicely. And, I've also found that sometimes Internet Explorer for... Um, Internet Explorer 4's desktop update can be a wee bit unstable sometimes, whereas installing IE5 brings back some stability and order. So, there you have it. The Compact Armada 7770 DMT is now fully set up, so that once again, I might run Rayman, because it runs best on Compact Armada, but, well, I know it's 7750 MT, but you can't! Anyway, no, I'm kidding on. So, that will just about do it for me. So, thank you for watching this video. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it and would like to see more, please consider subscribing to the Flying Scotsman YouTube channel. If you're looking for more things The Flying Scotsman, you can also follow The Flying Scotsman YouTube channel Facebook page and follow me on Twitter. To see my latest video, click on the link within the browser window. In the meantime, thank you for watching and please do feel free to join me for my next video. Cheerio bye.